Hi, my name is Jen Walker. I wanted to uh, reach out and chat with you today. I love helping people get healthy wherever they're at. So if you're starting on your own, I have some great tips for you. And if you want one-on-one -on -one support, reach out and we can chat and do a healthy mindset breakthrough session. So this is my first series on five crucial steps to getting started. The first step is on clarity and focus. You stare where you stare. The second is on micro habits. And you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Today we're going to talk about buffering and presence, um, becoming conscious and writing down thoughts and being present in the moment. And we're going to talk about buffering. So how aware are you of your daily life? Each moment of your life. Um, presence is huge. So I want to talk to you about a few things that will help you be more aware. So our brains are designed to be efficient. Habits are whether they're good or bad, take a ton of thought work out of your daily life so that you can make things easier for your brain. And habits help your brain focus on more important things that you can put your energy into. Habits are important. There's micro habits, the second step of the five part series, are they are so crucial for success. And so The Atomic Habits is a great book um, that I have really enjoyed and I definitely recommend. It's linked in the notes below in the description. Um, but they help refine the system for yourself to be successful. And systems are so important. So what do we do with all the moments in our day that are not habitual? Are we on autopilot? That's a huge question. So how do we become more present? Uh, as I help more clients on their health journey, structure brings such an awareness to people um, on not only what's happening inside their head, but like all the things that they actually do. And so I had a new client I was speaking with yesterday and I had asked them something um, of what they'd been learning in the last few days. And she's like, awareness. She's like, I'm so much more aware of what I'm putting in my mouth, what I'm doing, the habits I'm creating. So have you ever thought of how awareness has an impact on your happiness? Being present requires thoughts to be focused on what's actually happening in the moment. So for you right now, are you actually multitasking? Are you doing two things at once? Um, it's okay, I've been there, I've done that, but there are times for multi multitasking, but you won't get the same context out of it. Your connection, and if you're bored, you can um, focus on things, uh, refocus, reground yourself, and it will help retrain your brain as well. So your connection to, for example, listening to me, your connection will be deeper if you really focus on my words and listen and apply yourself instead of being distracted. So how does this apply to your health? If you're really present with your body, you have a whole new outlook and it will change everything for you. When you are eating, are you really present with the taste, texture, the smell, or are you eating it quickly? Or are you noticing your environment for when you're eating? What is going on for you? Or are you distracted by the company that you're with? Are you mindlessly um, eating throughout the day? Do you eat out of boredom or agitation? I want you to think of urges you might have. I am going to do a specific segment on urges and what to do with them. How, how do we, over, the over desire can really take away our goals. If we can figure out our urges and really feel it has a huge impact on our health. I would love to share that with you. So um, if you want info on this video, subscribe below and always like um, any of the videos that speak to you. And then you will be, if you subscribe, then you will be notified of when this urges video comes out. So presence always can be applied to working out as well, which is kind of cool. So like if you're doing a workout and you're just kind of doing like going through autopilot on it versus if you really intentionally think about that actual muscle, um, you'll work it better. It's a really cool experience. So it's fun to experiment. I challenge you to do that. What does presence have to do with balance? So if I can be transparent, I always disengage when people will say that they want to feel balanced in their lives. I found for myself that balance doesn't is actually more about being present in the moment. So if I'm curious about um, the balance is being more focused on the relationships, I think that maybe the relationships are suffering when they want that balance. Um, consider looking into how present you are with your connections, with your husband, with your wife, with your, um, with your children, with your friends. When you are with your children, is your mind somewhere else? Are you writing a to-do list? Are you thinking of all the things that you really should be doing? But really, what should you be doing, right? Um, and I have six kids. I get it. I know. And there's moments when I'm really intentional. And I think it becomes a, um, a habit to 
go into autopilot, right? So does your limbic system speak loudly with all the other things that you are going to want to be doing? Can you stop and become aware and challenge your distraction and refocus? You'll have such a powerful fulfillment when you do this. Uh, it's a work in progress. Something that I feel autopilot is not your friend. And so get um, more aware and being more present. So writing down thoughts can also be another tool to help you be more present in your life. So this can really help you see how your inner workings of your brain, what, like what, what's going on up there. So taking five minutes every day, this is something that I do, um, to write what's in your head without filtering it, without intention of like what you're going to write, just listening to what's going on in your head and not forming a judgment, but just getting it out on paper. Um, it will help you find patterns that are there and then you can learn more about yourself and the underlying beliefs that are keeping you from your goal. So have you heard this phrase before? Um, well, I'm going to talk about buffering. Do you know what I mean when I say buffering? So there are synonyms, synonyms for that. There's a cushion, absorb, soften, lessen, diminish, moderate, milligate, deaden, muffle, stifle, shield, and if you apply the word buffering in your life and all of those synonyms that I just listed, where do you find that you are escaping the moment, right? Um, what types of things do you use for buffering? Are you using social media to escape the boredom or stress or agitation that you might feel? Um, are you using alcohol to escape the drudgery and making things more fun or to like numb out, right? Are you using food to escape emotions? Are you solely using food as fuel? So every time you eat, if it's not exactly for fuel, there's probably an emotion tied to it. So being more aware of that is really cool and being more present. Um, are you using food to take your mind off of your stress or to make you happier or sad? Or are you bored or are you lonely? Um, are you stressed, frustrated, happy? Why are you eating? So these are some questions that I think are really helpful. Um, and I was writing some notes that I wanted to share too with uh, with with considering these buffers that we have so there's some that are going to be okay without a net negative um and i want to talk about that so does the buffering that you do because everybody does it somehow some way does it have a net negative consequence for you example if you buffer with social media it might make you feel more lonely um, and have less connection with people because it's through the computer and connections are so important so that's one of the consequences of too much social media. Uh, I have a friend who's wonderful. Her name's Curtly. She shared it with me, a document that you can go through. And I love to print this out and put it on my fridge. And it's so helpful. And it's going to ask you a bunch of questions of when you, it's time to eat um, if you want to take a look at these. So I think you'll love these. It's located in the description below. Print it out, stick it on your fridge, and ask those. So recap. Here we go. So can we become more present in our life? What can we do to do that? Uh, can we create habits that will serve us and help us be more present um, in the other moments of our daily life? Are you able to ground yourself and take yourself off autopilot? Can you write down your thoughts and do that every day to find patterns with your thoughts to be more intentional in that department? And can we become more aware of when we buffer and when we allow ourselves to be present in the emotions or are able to buffer less? Write them down, make a difference for you. Um, increase your happiness. Be more present in your life right now, today. So I have a challenge and it is to comment below with something that you can do to be more present or if you like look back and have an experience that speaks to you, share it. I would love to hear. And is there a time that you can be more intentional, more aware and more present? I hope you have a fantastic day. Reach out and I can't wait to meet you.